With campus crime on the rise, how safe do you feel? Good evening, I'm Orion Goodman. And I'm Monica Picante. Thanks for tuning in to Wake TV. After a rash of break-ins, the Wake Forest Police Department is increasing its efforts to maintain campus safety. Af mm, according to reports, can we, yeah, let's start over. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like I said, missed the email. All right. After a rash of break-ins, the Wake Forest Police Department is increasing its efforts to maintain campus safety. According to reports, all of the break-ins occurred off campus at or around houses rented by the university, primarily between December 19th and January 17th. 26 of the robberies affected students. As could be expected, news of the break-ins concerned other students as well as parents, forcing WFUPD to come up with an adequate response to the situation. According to Vice President of Student Affairs Ken Zick, the university will be increasing patrols around parking lots and dorms in the North Campus area. Security will even be available for escort to resident advisors making their rounds, as well as to any students who need it. However, while the WFUPD is increasing its efforts to make the campus and the surrounding area safer, individuals must also be in charge of their own safety. University Police Chief Regina Lawson said that day or night, we recommend that students be aware of their surroundings, report suspicious behavior, unusual vehicles, out of the ordinary activities. So, next time you're out adventuring at the night, for whatever reason, please be safe. Remember that test you had to take during your senior year of high school, the SAT? Regardless of how many bitter memories you're probably experiencing right now, the SAT is undergoing yet another makeover. The reason for this newest revamping is, according to College Board President David Coleman, to increase the value of the SAT. Ideally, the test should focus on a core set of knowledge and skills that are essential to college and career success. That means the test should re better reflect what's being taught in the classroom, as well as students' ability to succeed in college and career environments. However, reasons for the remodeling may not be as simple as they seem. According to Scott Jaschik, editor of Inside Higher Ed, many people suspect the change can be attributed to the ACT's rising popularity. The ACT last year overtook the SAT by a small margin, says Jaschik. Outside of competition between the two tests, the SAT faces more criticism from more sources. These days, around 38% of institutions are test optional, like Wake Forest. Many argue that standardized tests just reinforce general information relayed in students' transcripts, and some go so far as to say that tests like the SAT reinforce racial and socioeconomic inequality. While many levels of criticism do plague the SAT, it still enjoys a significant amount of success, with roughly a million and a half students either taking it or the ACT each year. I guess we'll just have to see how the upcoming tweaks affect college admissions. On Wake's campus, one cannot escape the name Reynolds, and for good reason. The Reynolds family made incomparable contributions to Wake Forest. However, it seems that Reynolds American Incorporated cannot escape some biting allegations. Reynolds American is the second largest tobacco company in the country, and also the parent of the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, which belong to our Reynolds family. An anti-tobacco advocacy group called the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids claims that Reynolds American markets tobacco products to children. They cite a federal study that reports a higher use of Camel cigarettes and Grizzly Moist Snuff among those aged 12 to 17. Camel and Grizzly are Reynolds American products. The Winston-Salem Journal writes that the company has said it has spoken with legislators on strengthening the laws regarding youth tobacco prevention, with five states passing bills related to the issue in 2012. It said its Right Decisions Right Now program that teaches children the dangers of tobacco use has been used in tens of thousands of schools and is endorsed by the National Foundation for Women Legislators. Still, the campaign for tobacco-free kids remains unimpressed. Now, let's... Mm. <laughs> Can we cut the now out of the last story? <coughs> okay, so can I just start here? Oh. Oh, because I said now on this camera and then I didn't. Yeah, I was supposed to do it in that camera. Yeah, okay. Um, now let's turn it over to Melanie Worley for, and mm, it's only her today, isn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Now, let's tell, mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I just reset? Now, let's turn it over to Melanie and hear about what's going on with health at Wake Forest. Melanie? Thank you, Monica. Three, two, one. 
if you're looking for a fun and effective way to work out on campus, check out the group fitness classes offered at our very own Miller Center. Classes of all sorts are offered daily at various hours throughout the day, so you're guaranteed to find a time to work out during a busy week. Instructor, instructors include members of Wake's faculty and our very own student body. Recently, I checked out one of the Zumba classes and had no idea working out could be so fun. The class is one hour long, but it flew by thanks to the fun moves I learned and the great music. If Zumba isn't your thing, there are plenty more traditional exercise classes offered, like yoga, kickboxing, core training, and spinning. I think yoga is a class that is often overlooked because you might not feel like you're really getting in a workout or you might neglect it in favor of strength training. But it is in fact perhaps one of the most beneficial types of exercise for your overall health. Yoga in general has been shown to improve mood and reduce stress. It, stretching also reduces soreness, improves blood flow throughout exercising muscles, and improves your flexibility. Flexibility when paired with proper exercise and muscular balance has been shown to improve posture, reduce back pain, and enhance athletic performance. So, I encourage you to be open-minded to all types of classes because in order to improve your overall fitness level, it is crucial that you balance both cardiovascular and muscular fitness. It also adds variety to your workout schedule, making it not seem so dull and boring. We are fortunate as students to have such a great workout facility right at our fingertips, so use this as motivation to check out the classes. Back to you, Orion and Moncaper. You know, I think I might check out some of those classes myself sometime. I've been trying to add a lot of variety to my weekly schedule lately. And you know, Ryan, I think you'd be really great at Zumba. I've seen you move. I probably would be, but I'm lying. Everyone knows the Harlem Shake. The Everyone knows the Harlem Shake, the video craze that swept through college campuses everywhere. While some of these videos managed to get pretty creative, like doing the shake underwater, it seems doing the Harlem Shake on an airplane crosses the line. Last month, Colorado College's Frisbee team managed to convince not only the plane's passengers, but also the plane's crew to okay their in-flight shake. Many of the other passengers even joined in. If you haven't already seen the video, described as only sort of viral, you can clearly see a crowd of people jumping up and down in the airplane. Oddly enough, you can also see the walls and ceilings shudder with the impact of 100 or so feet jumping up and down. Needless to say, the FAA was anything but pleased. According to the FAA, they are looking into what phase the flight was in during the event. However, Frontier Airlines, the airline in question, insists proper protocol was followed and safety belt signs were off. The FAA's official decision has yet to be released. As a private university, Wake Forest would not be affected by a proposed house bill that who is talking? Sorry. Yeah, isn't the thing going to pick up on that? <coughs> okay. As a private university, Wake Forest would not be affected by a proposed bill that Danny Moore, the director of the North Carolina Justice Center's Immigrant and Refugee Rights Project, calls mean-spirited and short-sighted. Last week, two state House Republicans of North Carolina, George G. Cleveland and Chris Wittemeyer, filed Bill 218, which would bar all unauthorized immigrants from attending any public university or community college. Unauthorized immigrants would include those immigrants who have been guarded from deportation by the President's Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals initiative. Though these immigrants have a lawful presence in the U.S., the proposed Bill 218 would forbid them from attending any public institution of higher learning. In opposition to the privileges currently allotted to immigrants protected by the DACA initiative, Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest said that President Obama is willfully ignoring the laws on the books and should, constitution and should be constitutionally challenged on this point by Congress. However, immigration advocates say that a bill that blocks so-called unorthodox unauthorized immigrants from higher education is not in the spirit of recent bipartisan efforts to negotiate immigration reform. The way for, uh, uh. Okay. Yeah. The Wake Forest may seem to present itself as a business-centered school. That doesn't mean it ignores public-centered jobs. In an attempt to help guide students that wish to acquire jobs in this field to succeed, the university has taken initiative and treated the Public Engagement Fellows Program. Fifteen fellows are a part of the new inaugural class that will learn about the job opportunities available in the public sector, getting help along the way while also garnering real-world experience. Occupations found within pu the public sector that participate. Uh, shit. All right. 
So it's not going to happen again. I'm going to get it this time. Though Wake Forest may seem to present itself as a business-centered school, that doesn't mean it ignores public-centered jobs. In an attempt to help guide students that wish to acquire jobs in this field to succeed, the university has taken initiative and created the Public Engagement Fellows Program. Fifteen fellows are a part of the new inaugural class that will learn about the job opportunities available in the public sector, getting help along the way while also garnering real-world experience. Occupations found within the public sector that participants in this program will delve into include those in education, government, and nonprofits. Law professor and director of the Institute for Public Engagement, Stephen Virgil, said on the program, We have a unique responsibility to our students who are looking forward to using their education as a force for good, whether that be as advocates for social, social equity, health and well-being, or the environment. There are unsolved problems and unmet needs that the students in our fellowship program are eager to address. The program will assist its fellows in accomplishing goals through helping them choose classes and activities and getting them on the employment radar through networking. MSN.com released their list of the most spoiled college campuses and Wake Forest did not make the cut. However, a neighboring university did. According to MSN, High Point University is the most spoiled college campus in the country. In earning their title, most spoiled college campus, HPU beat out Bodwin College in Maine, Smith College, Pepperdine University in Malibu, and Long Island University in New York. High Point earned its title in part for their ice cream truck that one student claims serves gingerbread and cookies during the winter holiday season, for their live music that is played during dining hall hours five nights a week, for free snacks provided between classes, for their valet parking, and for the classical music that plays on the promenade between academic halls when there is high foot traffic. At High Point, every student is gifted with a hand-delivered card and Starbucks gift card on their birthday. This campus features one indoor pool and two heated outdoor pools, complete with hot tubs. One may wonder how much students are paying for such amenities. Well, High Point University's cost of attendance is lower than Wake's by about $20,000. Twenty, yeah, like so, yeah. There's is like there's is about forty. <coughs> Fellow Wake Foresters, I'm Corvette Jeffries with this week's Campus Countdown. Coming in at number five on March 12th, relieve stress and take a walk or a jog around our beautiful campus with those in the Professional Development Center during Run Forest Run, also known as Walk Forest from 5.10 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. At number four, look out for your midterm grades as they, as they should be posted on Wednesday, March the 13th. At number three, on March 14th, the LGTBQ Center will still be holding their weekly coffee hour where you can relax and or socialize amongst tea, coffee, and comfortable couches. This week's number two is a reminder to catch the 60th annual ACC tournament that will be televised from Greensboro, North Carolina. And at number one, happy St. Patrick's Day. The holiday is observed on March 17th. And those are the top five things we are looking forward to on campus this week. Be sure to check them out. Back to you, Orion and Makapur. Um, Orion, is everything okay down there? Um. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? It was going to be so good. Sorry. Do it again. Mine's You're in the gutter. Stuck. No, I don't want to. Oh, I know. All right. Are we good? You got this? I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. Okay. We good? Okay. Um, Orion, are, is everything okay down there? I don't know. I'm just, I'm feeling really stressed out. You know, I think that you should hit up Run Forest Run. You know, I might just do that. Many students experience an overload of work, especially around, okay. None of this has been filming. Oh, God. <laughs> oh me? <laughs> Was that really? <laughs> Just because you. Sometimes it takes more than medicine to help someone get through an illness. Just ask Wake Forest Professor Mary Martin Neopold. 
Mrs. Neopold was given the news that she had breast cancer in 2011. But this past week, she had the chance to turn her illness into drive when she spoke at the Her Stories event here at Wake Forest. Her Stories is a place for breast cancer stories to be shared. The event was sponsored by several groups, including Wake Forest University Center for Bioethics, Health, and Society, the Humanities Institute, and the Gender Studies Program. In her bout with breast cancer, Mrs. Neopold had many obstacles to overcome, including surgery, radiation, and radiation treatment. Through this, she was able to find comfort in friends, family, and the medical team that treated her at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center. Mrs. Neopold's main goal in her speech was to reach her audience so that they may better understand the disease. About her colleague, Wake Forest professor Mary DeShazer, she said that Mary Martin said that Mary Martin is one of the many courageous women today who are challenging the stigmatization that can accompany breast cancer diagnosis and treatment by sharing insights from her lived experience. Mary Neopold is a true inspiration to everyone that has or is suffering from a chronic illness. And we'd like to thank her for sharing her time with us. Last Thursday, Mar wait, is that going to be, this is going to be last Thursday, or two <laughs> weeks ago Thursday. <laughs> Time's starting again. Okay. Right, let me zoom to one. Thursday, March 7th, the Sustainability Club on campus sponsored a Think Green Thursday. The club set up a booth outside of the Fresh Food Company to inform students of how they can eliminate waste and continue to make sustainable choices. Despite continuous efforts to encur encourage sustainability on campus, many students are still noticing large amounts of waste from the dining halls. Freshman Carmen Short noted that she sees people wasting food every day, especially from the salad line and fruit line. She suggested that people reevaluate how hungry they are actually are and get their plates at different times. The Sustainability Club encourages all decisions to be made with sustainable goals in mind. The easiest things they suggest for students to do are to turn off the lights when leaving rooms, use sustainable light bulbs in your desk lamps, and to make sure to keep water usage low. Residence halls like South, South have the ability to monitor the energy and water usage of each floor. Perhaps if every hall had this possibility, residents would be more conscientious of their, en of their own energy usage. Each week, this week, Will Shaker will keep us up to date with what's going on in sports, both at Wake Forest and at the national level. What's going on this week, Will? Hey, guys. <laughs> no, he won't. Lying again? No. Who do you think Who I is am? it? What was the no? It was <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This week, Will Shaker will keep us up to date with what's going on with sports, both at Wake Forest and at the national level. What's going on this week, Will? Chris Paul Day was on March 2nd when the point guard was honored for his work as a fuck. <laughs> and Chris Paul Day. Do I? All right. Three, two, one. Chris Paul Day was on March 2nd when the point guard was honored for his work as a Demon Deacon. Playing from 2003 to 2005, Paul, otherwise known as CP3, led us to our first number one men's basketball ranking in school history. He now plays for the Los Angeles Clippers and is without a doubt the best point guard in the game today. Chris Paul, began the Chris Paul Day began with a CP3 Foundation benefit breakfast before heading to the Joel to see the Wake Maryland game. He went with his wife and two-year-old son who wore a suit that made his father look like a hobo. CP3 was honored for his achievements during halftime, where his number three jersey was forever retired. Women's soccer head coach Tony Deleuze announced on March 4th that Georgetown assistant coach Mike Calabretta will join the staff. Calabretta has helped the Hoyas gain national recognition with a number seven rank in 2010. He has been a huge scouter and recruiter, which will be great with nine seniors on the squad next season. Calabretta is eager to work with the Deacons, stating, Wake Forest is well known as one of the premier women's soccer programs in the nation, and I'm thrilled to now be a part of it. I look forward to building upon the excellence and tradition that has been established. Welcome to Wake Forest, Coach Calabretta. Wake Forest baseball dropped a tough game to Charlotte last Tuesday afternoon at Hayes Stadium. The game was tied at three in the bottom of the seventh, but the Deeks came up short with only one run as opposed to the 49ers' two runs. The two teams split the season series as the Demon Deacons lost this game 5-4. The, te the team began ACC conference play over the weekend with games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in their series against North Carolina. The Deeks are looking to come out strong early on in conference play this season. Well, that's all I got for you. Back to you, Orion and Moncaper. Almost <laughs> fucked up your name. Sorry about that. Deuces. 
Okay. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> Thanks. Oh wait, when? Now? Okay. Thanks, Will. Many students experience an overload of work, especially around midterms. As a result of the increased workload, students often shirk off some of their assignments, especially their reading. In order to encourage every student to keep up with their readings, a workshop will be offered in Renola Hall on Wednesday, March 6th. The workshop focused on motivation and the difficulties which arise from a course load focused on grades. Many students believe that reading is the easiest task to avoid doing. Sophomore Carrie Gillen stated that she tries to finish all her reading, but sometimes it becomes too overwhelming. By motivating students to finish their readings, the workshop hopes to facilitate students to be genuinely excited about learning. Other ways that students can remain excited about learning and focus on readings is to break up the work. By doing the reading in short passages and then rewarding oneself with a five minute break or by switching out assignments on which they are working on, students will be able to keep their mind on the task at hand instead of zoning out and dreaming. On March 3rd, Wake Forest students Vanessa Moore and Katherine Wiener had the privilege of showing their documentary film, Ink From My Soul, at the Southeastern Center for Contemporary Art. This 52-minute documentary centered on two teenagers from Reynolds High School, showing how they cope with the problems that they face through writing. The teens were followed often, even giving the filmmakers permission to show them at their most vulnerable. Vanessa Moore says that the teenagers in their fi about their teenagers in their film, it took courage for them to allow us to film them during difficult situations, but we also shared their happy and joyous moments and were able to capture how, through authoring action, Tony and Hunter find a way to use their writing to bring healing and purpose to their lives. Once the event had ended, it moved into a celebration for the authoring action, authoring auction, which is a nonprofit organization that helped the two teenagers in the film vent their emotions by writing. Such a monumental achievement shouldn't go unnoticed, and we at Wake TV would like to applaud Moore and Wiener for their outstanding outstanding efforts in piecing this film together. Humor has long been seen as a desirable antidote for ailments. In certain circumstances, laughter can be the best way to avoid awkward tension. But on Wednesday, March 6th, Dr. Sam Gladding lectured on why humor and laughter is actually good for both our physical and mental health. His theory is that when we laugh, our muscles are activated, more oxygen flows to the blood, and the brain releases endorphins, which makes us happier. By inducing all of these physical changes, humor releases stress and tension. The physical aspects of humor are only equaled by the mental benefits as well. By feeling a sense of well-being, people become more creative, are able to solve problems more efficiently, and are able to identify the realities of life. The Professional Development Center hopes to encourage healthy living by encouraging humor. They know that there are times when humor is was inappropriate, yet they, in yet they encourage a healthy sense of humor, which can lead to actual health benefits. Well, that's all for Wake TV News this week. I'm Orion Goodman. And I'm Manga Picante. Thanks for watching and tune in again next week. If you dare. All right.